So first and foremost thing that strikes the mind, can the cloud be made secured and trusted? Can we achieve that level of perfection for while we are sharing our data or distributing the data between the cloud service providers? Can we make it secure? And if secure, can it be reliable? Can it be trustworthy? Now these are the difficult questions for which the answer is just not in binary zero or one. So what did the NIST do? Uh, the organization that introduced the concept of cloud computing for the very first time, they released a draft paper on the trusted cloud. Now trusted cloud is a scenario where uh, they have released a paper wherein they have invited the comments from the various people around working around the world that can we make a cloud as a trustable media and this, they have issued a security practice guide for VM virtual machine wear hybrid cloud infrastructure as a service environments. So they released it on October 27, 2021 and roughly for almost uh, six weeks, uh, five to six weeks, it was open for comment by the common public that yes, how is it possible? What are the factors we should keep in mind? What are the parameters we should be kept in mind? while designing a trusted cloud as such and you can look at some of the indians also uh, being a part of it the global community work like rajiv and harmeet so what did the nist have done they have established something called the national cyber security center of excellence in us which works on the emerging technologies what we call de novo technologies so cloud computing iot uh, web 4.0 industry 4.0 they are all working on this, uh, everything from the security perspective. So how industry 4.0 is relevant, how we can make it much more, um, how we can apply security concepts in these cloud computing and the IoT and the blockchain, the latest technologies. So they have released the three new draft reports, second draft NIST internal report, uh, NIST hardware enabled security because uh, just like a software security is important, so is a hardware security. And if you look at the hardware security, it's a very important issue. For example, if I'm purchasing any machine or a smartphone and there is some malware injected by some company, pirated companies into my hardware, how will I come to know? Answer is practically no. Because software ever vulnerability can still identify, but you can uh, identify whether the malware has been injected into your operating system, it's been downloaded on your machine or not. So you can still easily come to know by running certain softwares on your operating system that is there any malware uh, on your system or not but if the hardware manufacturer itself what we call OEM original equipment manufacturer they themselves has injected some malware into the hardware you will never ever come to know for example some of the top uh, phone manufacturing companies uh, which are based in China and Mongolia and North Korea there may be some South African countries they do something we as an individual will not come to know about it so these top-notch company like the Apple, the Samsung, uh, they will not do it. That's for sure because they are the uh, world reliable companies. But there are certain companies who are into phone making business and they're not reliable. And they want to capture your data. They want to have access to your contact book. They want to have access to whom you are talking to, your uh, email addresses. And even my phone may become vulnerable because nowadays we've got so many apps installed on our phone. We have got downloaded the Paytm and the other digital wallets. So if some hardware level mole is there, immediately they will siphon off my data and I will not come to know about it. So hardware enabled security has become really important in 2021 and onwards. Cloud, we all know uh, how we can make it trustable in all the three environments, software as a service, platform as a service and the infrastructure as a service. So they handled it for IES because once you handle it for infrastructure as a service, that means you will be able to handle both for software as a service also as well as for the platform as a service. So that's a good effort by the NIST when we talk of the cloud security. So hardware enabled security for the cloud and the edge computing. So it's all the work by the NIST. NIST is a part of the uh, US Department of Defense. So whatever they do, um, it's primarily meant for the common masses, for the common public. And, net, and not for the private IT companies. Though there could be certain uh, developers or technical evangelists from the IT companies also like Microsoft and the IBM and the Google who could be a part of this draft writing agreement. But then by and large NIST works for the government. So we can look at the URL also NIST.gov. So they work for the government and they helps in designing and formulating the policies. So hardware enabled security enabling a layered approach to platform security for cloud and edge computing use cases. Second draft 
again it was released on the same date uh, october 27 and the comments have been closed on the uh, december 6 so again you can find some of the indians being a part of it like uttam was there uh, ragura so akash malhotra so certain indians are already being a part of this uh, draft writing agreement and uh, these draft writing agreement play a very important role that how the framework for the next 5 years should be rolled out what should be the plan of action for the it companies and uh, because once the draft standard is there in place then the government what do they do they uh, table out a bill okay, this is how the thing should be rolled out for the common masses for example right now the indian government has banned cryptocurrencies but if they have banned the trading in cryptocurrencies both in china and india the governments of both these countries but they are still drafting a bill rules have which will have a rules and regulation that how the financial transaction should be done using cryptocurrencies again point is that the government wants that the hard earned money of the common man should not get wasted it should not happen that the professional hackers are able to get a trap of your money and your entire money gets siphoned off completely and you nowadays there's so many phone hacking incident also happening you have got apps installed on your phones uh, anybody can hack your phone and then did a debit all the money from your bank account so the government's primary objective is that the customer's interest should not uh, be deliberated the customer hard earned money should not get wasted by this they should not get trapped by the ethical hackers or professional hackers so they want to safeguard the customer's interest and that's why they have banned the cryptocurrency as a, as a no. but then again the cryptocurrency is the future they will have to roll it out maybe next year or maybe next to next year but till then proper billing has to be done they will draft a bill table it in parliament get it approval from the all the mps and then yes it can be used by the commercial companies and then the financial tra transaction will be legalized in a broader domain both by india and china because for any technology to prosper in the world india and china are the two biggest markets because of the sheer size of population so anything which is being backed up by the uh, these two countries will have a future nobody can stop it as such now let's move on to the uh, uh, cloud security we already discussed we have also discussed the role of cloud security alliance in the previous uh, slides so now we come to the next topic what are the various quality of service now quality of service means every cloud service provider should promise me something uh, should provide a minimum level of service so we say qs den uh, denotes the level of rap reliability availability and performance which is offered by the cloud service provider through an application and or by the platform or the infrastructure that hosts it just like a simple example uh, which might we have taken earlier also for telecom service providers we have got try telecom regulatory authority of india so if i am a, a customer of vodafone or airtel uh, or any other company jio then there should be sort of minimum level of quality of service which these companies should provide to me when i am their user as such so if you already studied a subject there was a subject called cellular and mobile communication uh so there is a book by lee and he says ki minimum 2% the drop in the uh, calls should be allowed to happen means 100 calls which are originating from a given domain by telecom service provider 98 should be the success rate only 2% calls should be allowed to be dropped whether you are using a gsma or you are using a amp system or you are using a cdma or any other kind of the technology for establishing a telecommunication so for telecom service provider we have got a minimum 2% level 2% drop in services maximum allowed as such same way here also quality of the csps should provide certain minimum level of service when they are because we are paying them cloud services not free of cost for example we have discussed the fisma uh, cl cloud cost calculator at the us and the nic megaraj cloud cost calculator so we are paying them so once you are paying them you expect certain quality of service let's take another example if i'm using a email services of google i've got my gmail account now I, it's a free of cost account i'm not paying for it so they're not bounded to provide me very good quality of service because it's a free of cost free of cost i i went to the gmail.com i created my email account so it's free so once it is free they are not bounded to provide me the good quality of service but once i start paying it what to call premium email services then yes the you expect you demand you want a quality of the service means certain quality in the services provided by the cloud service providers 
So when we talk of the network, we have got three main parameters on which we evaluate any service. One is a jitter. That means whether the uh, connectivity on the network is regular or intermittent or there are certain drops happening and you're not able to get the good quality uh, uploading and downloading of the data or the sharing of the data between the various servers of the cloud. Then what is the delay level? What is the latency? Now delay should be only with the acceptable limits. It should not be beyond a point. Otherwise the customer will lose the interest and he might switch over to another cloud service provider completely. So delay only till the acceptable point. And then what is the throughput of the network? Throughput is again, let's say if there are four or five quality of service uh, cloud service providers, then on a given day, in a given time scenario, how many number, amount of the data they are sharing over the web between the different cloud service provider, how many number of the requests are coming via the cloudlets to the broker of the servers and how many number of requests are getting fulfilled, how many number of requests are getting failed. So all these evaluation statistics has to be done. For let's say for a, in a given day, 100 people come to the cloud service providers and all of them wants a different, we have got something called resource provisioning, which we have, we have discussed earlier also means you ex, you want a resource let's so let's say i want four virtual cpu with 16 gb of ram 20 gb of hard disk space and four routers in an infrastructure as service environment so this is my demand whether my cloud service provider is able to fulfill or not if yes then what is the delay if it is able to completely fulfill or partially able to fulfill for example i say well, i want four virtual cpu by csp says cloud service provider says i can only give you two virtual cpus so what i'm demanding and what is being provided to me, there is a demand supply gap here. So it de all depends about the cloud service provider own capability, own configuration, how much uh, resources are available at the disposal and what is the customer base, how many number of the clients want access to the service and how, many, how much amount of quantum of the service the cloud service provider is able to fulfill or not. So and not only service provisioning, but the quality should be maintained means the when of the ram space is provided to me or the buffer space is provided to me or when the servers like apache tomcat is provided to me or the ba weblogic server is provided to me from the cloud service provider and when i'm going to log into the server full access should be provided to me so that depends upon the kind of service being provided by the cloud service provider so we say qs is fundamental for the cloud users who expects the cloud service providers to deliver the advertised quality characteristics now, who are these cloud service providers? The companies who are managing the cloud environment, like we have got a Manjira Soft in Australia, we have got IBM in US and Europe, uh, we have got a Google, Google Cloud Platform is there. So these are companies who are into the cloud business, Amazon Web Services is there. So these are the cloud service providers. And when you go to the portal of these websites, the company owned websites, and when they advertise these characteristics, that they will provide you A, we will provide you with a feature B, we will provide you the high speed, uh, downloading with a very wide infrastructures and a good amount of the virtual CPU, fast processing cycles. So these are the kind of promises they are making. So they should be able to fulfill those promises. And for the cloud providers who need to find the right trade-off between the quality of service levels and the operational cost, because cost of running at the service is very, very high. And the uh, power consumption is very high in the cloud. When you run the cloud service environment, 24 by 7 by 365, because uh, I visited one of the, the NIC Megraj cloud at the Shastri Park in East Delhi. So they have, they have got good, good setup cloud so because, but the running cost is very, very high. Also, these servers generate a lot of heat. Uh, so a good cooling is to be provided to the energy being gener heat generated by this cloud service provider. So first of all, you require the electricity for running the servers 24 by 7 by 365. And then you also require a very high quality uh, air conditioning. So as to uh, keep the cool, these servers cool, otherwise these servers will burn out because of the heat they are generating. So a huge, com a huge cost is being required, what we call operational cost for running these servers at the cloud service providers end. So there's a very good paper on the quality of service also, uh, which we also say some of the benchmarks paper. So if you are interested, you can refer to it uh, for the Springer edition quality of service in cloud computing, modeling techniques and their applications. So it's a 2014 paper is there. That was an early paper in quality of service. Now the things have changed in the last seven years, but some this was the base paper that talks of initial concepts that what is quality, what is service 
what is quality of service because first of all the service should be there then only you can expect certain quality in it if the service is not there what you will expect from the quality quality to comes later on when the service is there in place so uh, now when we talk of the service there are also called something called sls service level agreements so finding a optimal trade off is a difficult decision problems that's perfectly true often exaggerated by the presence of service level agreements specifying the quality of service targets and the economical penalties associated to the sla violations now what is the service level agreement uh, for example if you purchase uh, let's take a real time example if you purchase a uh, air conditioner ac for your home maybe a window level or a split level ac then these companies initially for one year they will provide you to the two services free of cost maybe that could be the dry servicing or the wet servicing and after that they will say you know you go into the amc mode annual maintenance contract and they will charge you let's say 2000 rupees in which they will provide you with the service and also some hardware cost if certain uh, let some part has got malfunctioned and need to be replaced these companies will say that they will provide you with the let's say 50% reduction in cost or 80% reduction in cost maybe or maybe 100% Uh, replaceable cost asset so these are getting so that amc is a agreement uh, which is going to be signed because you are going to pay the money for one year so they will issue you the bill also that you uh, let's say you are paying 2000 rupees for one year of your amc getting amc of your 1.5 ton ac and then this company is bounded to provide you with the service for one full year so you can make a call to the customer care or download their app Uh, or maybe reach out to their uh, website and then ask for the service and this company should provide you with the service because you entered into a uh, agreement for a duration of one year so that is a service level agreement that is agreed between you and your service provider the concept goes everywhere same so service level agreement means the vendor is will make you as an end user sign the agreement that this and they will tell you that this is what we are going to provide and this is what we are not going to provide so they will also say there certain parts like abc part of the ac which cannot be covered with the cost and you will have to bear full cost of it however there are certain metal parts or plastic part for which they will bear the cost and half you will bear the cost. and certain services will be free so it depends upon the terms and condition between you and the vendor and that is what the sla talk about service level agreement now if any of you uh, maybe you end user or maybe the company back off or they are not able to fulfill the promises they have made then we have economical penalties uh, which can be uh, so you can take the company to the court of law and ask them okay this is what they promised and this they did not delivered so there are certain consumer court also where you can go against these companies and file a case you don't have to go to civil courts to file a case so quality of service of the cloud service providers even we uh, map the same example here if if i am paying to the amazon web services or google cloud paid form because i am paying the money by credit cards so they are they are bound to provide you certain quality of service level that means certain amount of virtual minimum virtual cpus minimum amount of the ram space minimum amount of the hard disk space operating systems servers routers switches gateways so depends upon what kind of the agreement have entered into with these companies and they need to uh, make sure that they are bound to it otherwise i can sue them in a consumer court and then the court can pass off the directions and ask this company to pay the money or to the end users so sir that is what service level agreement is all about that the agreements which get entered between the end users and the vendors so if you look at the service level agreements a definition Uh, the best practice for service level agreement a service level agreement defines the level of service you expect from a vendor laying out the matrix by which the service is measured so you need to have certain parameters on the basis of which you can um, monetize and quantify a particular service as well as remedies or penalties so that if certain problem happens between you and the cloud service provider what is the penalty which one has to bear for example uh, you don't pay the complete money so now the the vendor can sue you that since you are availing the quality of you are availing a service you must pay the cost in full and they should agreed on the services level not ever. so penalty is imposed for the services level not achieved uh, between the two of the entities and it is a critical component of any technology vendor contract so any tvc the technology vendor contract 
will have certain this penalty clause agreement